magnetic uh, flux, right? And then we talked about uh, Faraday's law, right? And then uh, we talked about uh, these and these are uh, things uh, we talked about. So let us understand uh, these uh, things uh, very quickly, and uh, then we'll do some more uh, questions. So first was, uh, what was the magnetic power? So this chapter, yeah, so we are just uh, starting. And uh, yeah, so we will take uh, lots of analogies from uh, whatever we have done in the previous uh, chapters. So we will take uh, lots of analogies. Right. So as uh, we understood about uh, different kind of uh, surfaces, so we talked about uh, different kind of uh, surfaces. So let's say the two kinds of surfaces that we talked about was uh, one was a plane surface, right? And the other surface that we talked about was a curved surface. Right. So in the case of a plane surface, what are the example of plane surface? So let's say if we take uh, this surface, rectangular surface. So this is a, a plane one, right? Like, uh, like uh, this uh, note uh, pad, right? So this is uh, a plane surface, right? This is uh, a plane surface. So, and uh, then this uh, mobile also, so this is also a plane surface. So all these kind of uh, surfaces, right? So one we have, uh, one we have a uh, plane surfaces, right? And let's say you have uh, this uh, disc also. So this disc, this is also a plane surface, plane surface. So for these kind of uh, surfaces, the direction is uh, what? The direction of these uh, areas or these area vector is what? So that is uh, normal to this uh, surface, right? So these uh, n hat are uh, the direction of uh, the surface, right? So if I talk about uh, this plane, plane of uh, this uh, node band, right? So the direction of uh, this would be normal to this one. So this would be the direction, right? Normal to this one. So this would be the direction of the plane surface. So for the case of uh, the disk uh, also, the finding out uh, the direction would be what? Uh, yeah, yeah, so these are the direction of the plane surface. But if we have uh, if we have a curved uh, surface, right? If we have a curved surface, let's say this kind of a shape, right? Or let's say we have uh, this uh, sphere. So for this uh, sphere. If I take uh, this area, so this is in this direction. If I take uh, this area, so this is in this direction. If I take this area, so this is in this direction. So in everywhere, the normal vectors are uh, changing, right? So that is why, and in this case also, so this has a normal in this direction, this has a normal in this direction, this has a normal in this direction. So if we take, if we take a curved surface area, so perpendicular to that would be different uh, direction, right? So curved surface area has a different uh, direction, normal vector. So for these uh, cases, we take a small uh, element, area element, right? And then uh, we talk about this uh, DS uh, vector, right? So this is very, uh, whenever we have uh, this uh, curved surface, 
then we talk about this small area element uh, ts whenever we have this uh, plane surface then we talk about uh, then we talk about this uh, area vector area vector a Whenever we have these uh, plane surfaces, then we talk about this area vector simply or S V area vector. So these are the two kinds of uh, surfaces and the direction of the area vector. So what is the need of uh, this uh, surface? So this surface is very useful in defining the flux. So in the case of in the case of uh, taking the analogy from the electric uh, charges, so in the case of in the case uh, of uh, electric uh, flux, right? What was uh, this uh, electric uh, flux? So this electric flux was uh, the number of the electric field lines passing normal to the plane. Right, passing normal to the area. So that was uh, the electric uh, flux. So for this case, for this case, uh, what is uh, the electric flux? What is the electric flux in this case? So the number of electric field line passing through this area is one, two, three, four, five. So the electric flux is five, right? And uh, this was represented by this uh, simple thing that was uh, EA or E dot, A, which was uh, E uh, A cos theta. So this theta was angle between the area vector and the electric. Field. So if I take if I take my electric field in this uh, direction, right? This is my plane, my electric field is going this direction. So the normal, okay, is, uh, yeah, what, uh, sir, can you scroll up at uh, last? I will take a screenshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will uh, take the time, I will give you guys the time to put it down, right? So, yeah, this is uh, the plane, and the electric field are passing like uh, this. So we'll have to take the electric field line which are passing normally, right? So then we have to take this angle theta, right? And take the projection of this electric field along this area vector which is n. So that will give you E cos theta into this uh, area. So that would give you A cos theta. So that is what uh, this uh, electric flux is. But this is for the plane surface. If you have a curved surface, then you take a small area element uh, ds, and the electric field passes normally to this one. So then for curved surface, you take, uh, you take your electric flux as integral of E dot ds. Uh, you take a small area element ds and then you integrate all over it. So then you will get uh, the electric flux. So these were the cases of uh, the electric flux. And then you saw that uh, for the case of uh, for the case of uh, Gauss law. Right. So we saw that uh, in Gauss law for uh, electric charge or for electric uh, what was that so if we take a closed surface right if we take a closed surface and this has some charge right so from Gauss law it stated that the closed integral of e dot ts that would give you q enclosed by epsilon naught. So that will give you the charge, electric charge. So from Gauss law, we got electric charge, right? 
So along the same line, taking the analogy from this thing, we have a magnetic flux, right? So for a magnetic flux, right? For magnetic field, you have a magnetic flux. So what is magnetic flux? The same thing as uh, the electric flux, but it is magnetic field line. So you have uh, this uh, surface, right? And the magnetic field lines passing normally to it. So magnetic field lines passing normally to this surface, that is your magnetic flux. So I will directly write it. This is uh, PA cos theta, right? Where this theta is angle between magnetic field and area vector. Direction of area vector is always normal to the area vector, the plane of uh, the vector, right? So this is the magnetic field. So let us do one problem which is very useful in understanding this thing. So let's say that uh, the area, the plane of the area vector, so the plane of uh, the area vector for the surface of uh, magnitude 5 meters square is uh, making an angle of 30 degree with the magnetic field of uh, magnitude let's say uh, 4 p tesla right then find uh, the magnetic uh, flux. Right, so we have an uh, area vector. So this is uh, the plane of the area vector, right? And uh, the magnetic fields, they are, so this is uh, the plane of the area vector and they are making an angle of 30 degrees, right? So this angle is uh, given, which is uh, 30 degrees. But what is the angle that we require? We require the angle between the normal, this is the normal, right? So we require this angle. So this is uh, theta, which is 60 degrees. So we have a theta which is 60 degree, we have magnetic field which is 40 tesla, we have area which is 5 meter square. So flux would be simply Pa cos theta which is 40 into 5 cos of 60. So this is 40 into 5 cos 60 is half. This is 20, so 100 papers. Right, so this is uh, the magnetic uh, flux. So, you guys, uh, please uh, note down from here, and then we will talk about uh, the Faraday's law. Right, but before we talk about uh, Faraday's law, we'll talk about the Gauss law for magnetic field. That uh, we'll talk about. Okay, so let me zoom this one out. Yeah, you guys please move down. I wanted to upload. Yeah, you guys have these uh, exams which are happening. So you guys, please. What are the chapters that are coming in your exam, Aisha? What are the chapters? And if you require uh, some revision, right? Please, uh, all. All. Sir, for me also, all the chapters are coming. 
what the chapters are from just in your class uh, yes we have uh, completed all those uh, chapters have you completed all those chapters yes yes no sir in the physics class uh, physics cbc class i think uh, other one more chapter is left yeah communication system that is good no another chapter is also left okay two chapters yeah modern physics and uh, communication yeah so those are very those are not uh, your those are not good chapters yeah you guys please uh, focus on whatever you have done and uh, yeah those will uh, give you prepare with those only that we have studied that just for practice purposes that how much you final exam will happen in uh, at later stage right but you guys uh, focus on whatever has been completed so far just revise this Yeah, whenever you guys want me to scroll down. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then uh, please uh, down. <coughs> So remember this Gauss law of electric field uh, will give you the idea of electric charge, right? So, yeah, you guys, whenever you guys have completed this part, please tell me. Yeah. What about you, Pia? Have you noted it down? Noted. Yes, sir. Okay. So now let us understand about. Uh, let us understand about Gauss law for uh, magnetic. Uh, Right. In the third chapter, I got in electricity, you learned about uh, Biot-Savart's law, right? You learned about Biot-Savart's law. In the first chapter, you learned, you learned about Gauss law for electric field. Now, Gauss law for uh, magnetic field, right? So, what does it uh, say? It says that uh, when you calculate uh, the number of magnetic field lines, Passing through the closed uh, area of uh, the magnetic field, so that will give you zero. Right. This is uh, the Gauss law for magnetic uh, field. So, what does it uh, say? If you have, uh, let's say, a magnet, right? This is not uh, the sound that you guys already know that uh, the electric uh, magnetic field lines comes from. Uh, now north pole and uh, goes into the south pole. So they comes out of uh, this north pole and they 
So you see that whatever magnetic field line is coming out, whatever field uh, magnetic field line is uh, coming out, so that is going again, right? So that is going inside. So if I take uh, the, let's say if I take the closed loop in here, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Six magnetic field lines are coming out. So that is positive six. Six way is uh, going in. So that is minus six. So inside this closed loop, I will get a zero magnetic uh, flux. So which means that there is no, so which means that there is no magnetic charge, right? There is no magnetic charge, which means that uh, this magnet, these magnets always comes in uh, pairs, right? Always comes in dipoles. So they always have two charges. So they have this uh, north pole and they, they have this south pole. You can't have a magnet which have only one magnetic charge. So this uh, this Gauss law states that, this is a very important law, it states that there is no magnetic charge. So you can't have, can't uh, have magnetic Right. So you can have this magnetic dipole, but you can never have this uh, magnetic uh, part. So there is no magnetic charge uh, which is uh, existing. Right. So if you have this uh, magnet and you have this north and south pole, if you cut this magnet in half, then this will create a south pole in here. This will create a north pole. So again, you will get a dipole. You can never have a, a magnetic So this is what is uh, given by this uh, Gauss law for magnetic Right. This was all about uh, the magnetic flux and uh, the Gauss law. So let us do one question. And we have done already this question, but let us do this uh, question to properly understand. Is that a question? Let us uh, try this question and uh, try to So a circular disk, right? We have a circular disk. So this is uh, an open surface or a closed surface. What kind of surface is this? Yes, guys, what kind of surface is this? Open sur surface or a closed surface? So we have this disk. Right, this is an open surface. So we we'll use the magnetic flux, which is a B A cos theta. Right. So we have this uh, magnetic flux, right? And uh, in such a way that its axis O. Oh, so its axis. So we have this uh, disc, and this is the axis of uh, this disc. So this axis is going perpendicularly, right? So this axis is uh, making an angle of 60 degree with magnetic field. So you have this magnetic field, right? And uh, this axis is making a 60 degree angle with this uh, magnetic field, right? So you know theta, which is uh, 60 degree, you know what is uh, magnetic, uh, so a uh, circular disk of radius 0 0.2 meter. So you know the radius of this disk. 
right? This is the zero point. So you have this radius which is uh, zero point two meter. So and uh, this magnetic field uh, of induction. So this is one by pi vapor per meter square. We know that what is the unit of uh, magnetic field? Magnetic field unit is Tesla, right? But uh, we know that flux is a vapor. If this takes in. So flux is vapor and uh, area is a uh, meter square. So phi is a uh, PA. This is some ratio, right? So ratio doesn't have any SI. So if I try to find out the unit of magnetic field, so that would be phi by A. So this is vapor per meter square. So I can write uh, either Tesla or I can write this in uh, this way also. So magnetic field is also given, which is one by pi. Right, all these are NSI units. So we have to find out the magnetic uh, flux. So to find out the magnetic flux, we require area. Area is uh, this disk. So area would be pi r square, right? So we have all these uh, things. Let us uh, try to calculate this uh, flux. So this is the uh, VA cross uh, theta. So V is one by pi. Area is pi r square, right? And uh, cross of uh, 60. So this uh, would be how much? This pi, this pi will cancel. R is 0 0.2 into 0 0.2 cos 60 is uh, half. This is 10, this is uh, 10. This will uh, cancel. So this is uh, 4, uh, yes, this is 2 divided by 100. So this is 0 0.02. Right, so 0 0.02 paper. This would be the answer. Okay, is this thing uh, clear, guys? Yeah, then please, you guys, uh, please uh, it down and then we'll talk about uh, Faraday's. Uh, Yeah, whenever <laughs> you guys have noted it down. guys <laughs>
Yes, guys, uh, noted. Yes, the one. Yeah, you are seeing something. I shall see something. Yes. If not, uh, here you probably. Yes, noted. Yeah, so we have to. Oh, good. good. So now let us understand about uh, the next topic, uh, which is right, which is right. Let us uh, understand about uh, hierarchies. So I will uh, directly write that uh, we have understood about magnetic flux, right? So let's say if you have a coil and then you have uh, this uh, magnet, right? <coughs> so if you uh, if you rotate or if you move uh, this uh, coil towards its direction or away from its uh, direction, right? Let's say this is north and uh, south. So this will create an EMF, right? This will create an EMF, and that EMF was uh, given by this uh, Faraday's law, right? So Faraday made a circuit resistance, right? And uh, he placed some galvanometer in here, and then he made uh, some coil, right? Uh, connected with this uh, thing, right? So then he saw that when he moved uh, this coil in here, so this uh, this uh, galvanometer showed a deflection, and that uh, from this uh, deflection he gave this uh, Faraday law, right? So I'm not to write all this thing. I will just write uh, the result, and uh, that is what that EMF generated. That would be equal to the rate of change of flux, right? So that is what uh, this. Faraday is always about. This is EMF induced, right? And this is uh, the magnetic flux. So change in magnetic flux will give you the induced uh, EMF. And we can also, let's say, if you have connected some resistance R to it, so then we can calculate this induced current, and that would be how much E by R. Right, which is minus one by R D pi by D. Right, so these are instantaneous ones. Right, these are instantaneous uh, EMF. Instantaneous one. And we can also have uh, this average uh, EMF uh, induced. And that would be how much minus of delta phi by delta t. So this is uh, the average EMF and uh, yeah, the average uh, current would be how much? So that would be minus one by R delta phi by delta t. So that would be the average current uh, induced. So these are uh, the Faraday's law and this minus sign is very important and it tells us about this Lenz law. Right. So this uh, Lenz law, what does it uh, talk about? So it talks about uh, that uh, EMF generated will try to oppose the change of uh, this magnetic flux. So the current or EMF would be induced in a such a way that it will try to oppose this uh, change in magnetic flux. So that is what uh, this minus sign represents right so let us uh, understand about uh, this length law in our two cases right so case one is uh, when we move the magnet uh, itself right so we have a coil and uh, we have this uh, magnet so this is north and this is south 
and we are moving this a uh, towards uh, this square right so if we are moving uh, this magnet towards its direction right which means that uh, it will try to oppose uh, this movement so it will attract or repel this coil will try to attract or repel this magnet what will it do if this is moving towards its, its direction yes what it will do right it will try to repel this uh, magnet right so if we are repelling this magnet this is north pole so it should create a north pole in this uh, direction right so it should uh, create a north pole so the direction of the induced current would be this right so this would be like uh, this and uh, let's see if we are uh, if we have uh, this square and uh, we are uh, taking this coil away from uh, this uh, we are taking this magnet away from this square so now this coil will try to attract uh, this uh, magnet right so to attract this uh, magnet it will create a south pole because this is the north pole so attract this magnet it will create a south pole so then the direction of uh, the induced current would be in this direction. So this would be the direction. And these are, uh, this is uh, A part, B part. Similarly, let's say we have, uh, we have a coil and uh, we have uh, this magnet, right? This is south pole, this is north pole. And we are moving this coil towards its direction. So this coil will create again a south pole, right? And uh, similarly, if we have a uh, E part, so if we have a coil, and this is uh, a magnet which is south and north, and we are moving away this fact. So it will create a north, north uh, pole, right? So this will be right. So this is uh, the case one to understand uh, the dense one. So how the induced current uh, will be here? What would be the direction of the induced current? And that is uh, given by this dense term, right? Similarly, we can understand uh, this lens law in the other case uh, as well. So let's say we have uh, this magnetic field and this direction is uh, so showing this is uh, the direction of uh, inwards right so this direction is uh, inwards magnetic field is uh, going inwards and in this magnetic field what you are doing so you have a three case first case is that you are moving a coil from here to here Right, you are moving a coil from here, then you are moving a coil uh, here, right? And then you are moving a coil from this part. So you have uh, three cases, right? Let's say this is A, B, C, D. This is A, B, C, D. This is A, B, C, D. Right. So in the first case, you are entering the magnetic field, which means that your magnetic field is uh, increasing, right? So in this part, we have only this uh, part of magnetic field. When you increase this portion, so you, this whole uh, magnetic field would be there. So your magnetic field is increasing, right? So then this uh, coil will generate. So this is uh, one region, this is second, this is third. So in a region one, in a region one, this will create, this coil will try to create a magnetic field outside, right? Because magnetic field is in, so to decrease the magnetic field, the magnetic field should be outwards, right? So if I have a 
a magnetic field outwards right so this is inward direction so if i have a magnetic field which is uh, outwards right so if i have a magnetic field which is outwards so that will cancel this inwards uh, magnetic field, right so if i have a magnetic field outwards if i use uh, the thumb's law so what should be the direction of current what should be the direction of current magnetic field is coming outside right magnetic field is coming outside so the direction of the current should be this and this should be the direction so that uh, the magnetic field is coming outside so the direction of uh, the magnetic field would be in this way. right so if i have a magnetic field in this direction if i call my finger in this direction then uh, what will happen then the magnetic field would be outwards right so this would be the direction of the induced current so the direction of uh, induced current induced uh, current is uh, a b c d a similarly in uh, region second right in region second we see that uh, they are the same magnetic fields right so magnetic field is not changing magnetic field is not changing so flux is not changing so if flux is same so induced current would be zero right induced current uh, would be zero similarly in uh, region third in region third the magnetic field is decreasing right magnetic field is uh, decreasing so induced will try to increase right try to increase it so the magnetic field would be in the the induced current will create a magnetic field in cross direction right so in cross direction it will create a magnetic field which will increase the magnetic field so then if i have a cross which means that the magnetic field, the current is going in this right so if i call my finger if i call my finger in this way so if i call my finger in this way so magnetic field is going in this right so that would be so this would be the direction of the induced current so these are the two ways right so this would be the direction of the induced current so these are the two ways in which we imagine the direction of the induced current uh, with the help of the lens law so induced current will be uh, a b c these are the two ways uh, in which we are to say okay <coughs> yeah and uh, yeah so you guys please note up to this point and then we will understand that how can so then uh, we'll do a couple of questions to understand all this. Right. So these are all about variance uh, or interference. Okay, you guys, please uh, write it down. <laughs> and whenever you guys want me to scroll down, please write uh, it.
Yeah. Anyway, you guys want me to scroll down, please? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then uh, please uh, look down now. Uh, and then we'll do a couple of questions. Yes, uh, noted, guys. No, yeah. okay, so now let us do a couple of questions to understand. So what did we understand? That we can create, right? So we can create, so we can create the EMF by changing uh, the flux, right? And uh, we know that flux is uh, how much? That is uh, V A cos theta, right? So we have uh, three parameters. We have three parameters to change uh, the magnetic flux. So what are what is that? So the, this is magnetic field. So we can change the magnetic field to create this EMF. We can change uh, the area to change uh, to create an EMF, right? Or we can change this angle also, right? We can change this theta. We can rotate to create uh, the EMF. So where do you guys have seen this uh, thing? Where do you guys have seen this uh, thing to create an EMF? Yeah, where do you guys have seen this example? Yes? In AC? Yeah, in the in the transform, right? Not in the transform, but in the right in the EMF, right? Yeah. yeah so I am asking that where you guys have seen this uh, example, right? In the generator, we have uh, seen this example. In the generator, we had uh, this magnetic field, right? And we had uh, this uh, coil, right? We had this coil, and uh, we had uh, these uh, brushes, right? And then we rotated uh, this uh, coil, right? So we had uh, we had uh, this coil, and then we rotated uh, this coil, right? We rotated this coil, and then we got uh, the EMF. But the area. 
area of this coil remained uh, same, right? So area was same, and uh, the magnetic field uh, was also the same, right? It had same magnetic uh, field. So B was same, A was same, right? Magnetic field was same, area was same. Only the theta that uh, was there, you changed this theta, right? So this is uh, the example of uh, all these changing parameters. So one thing is uh, one thing is that you can change this phi as a whole. You can change this phi as a whole, or you can change them. So in these ways, uh, you can get to your idea. So first, uh, let us understand that changing changing phi as a whole, right. So then your EMF would be how much that would be simply minus d phi by dt. So now let us uh, put some question and then we'll understand it uh, from so the first uh, question that you have, right. This is the first uh, question. And this has been asked in latest uh, meeting now, right? This simple question, and uh, you guys see that how easy is uh, this question, right? So you have uh, given the flux, right? Uh, you are uh, given uh, this flux, and uh, they want you to calculate uh, the induced EMF. What do we know? Induced EMF is minus d phi phi d. So, which means that the magnitude of uh, induced EMF in the coil at the fourth second. So they want us to calculate uh, the instantaneous, right? Instantaneous EMF they want us to calculate. So this would be how much, right? So this uh, would be how much? This would be, yeah, so the EMF we know that is how much? That is d by dt of, and this is uh, pi, this is uh, given, right? So this is uh, 3t plus uh, 60, right? So these are uh, the values uh, that are given, and uh, this would be how much if we differentiate uh, this thing. So this would be minus d by dt of uh, 5t squared plus uh, d by dt of uh, 3t plus d by dt of 60. This is a constant, so that would be cancelled. So then if we integrate, differentiate this thing, so this would be how much? This would be 10t plus, uh, this is uh, how much? 3, right? So then uh, what would be this uh, thing? So if we calculate uh, the EMF in uh, 4 seconds, right? EMF in 4 seconds, that would be how much? So that uh, would be, EMF in uh, four seconds. That would be minus uh, ten into four plus that. Uh, right. So this is uh, minus uh, forty-three volt. And uh, they were the fourth second. Right. So at the fourth second, they want us to calculate. So first we'll calculate. EMF in four seconds, right? And then we'll tell the second is how much? This is minus 10 into 3 plus uh, 3. So that is uh, minus of uh, 33, right? So EMF at the fourth second, that would be how much? E4 minus uh, E3, which is minus 43 minus minus plus of 33, so that would be minus 10 volt, right? So 
if we take only the magnitude, so that would be how much? That would be 10. So this uh, would be the answer. Right, so this, uh, this is uh, the question. This is a simple question that they have asked. So you guys, uh, please uh, note it down. And if you guys have any doubt, uh, please uh, tell me. Right, and then we'll stop it here in the next class. Week. Please uh, note it down. And if you guys have any doubts, please uh, tell me. Yeah, so they have given this option also. You never get confused with uh, this one because this 43 volt is the EMF. So, one, two, three, four seconds. Okay. So, we are counting all these uh, times, right? So in four seconds, this would be the EMF. In three seconds, this would be the EMF uh, generated. What they want us to calculate in fourth second. So we will calculate from zero to three. We'll calculate from three. Yeah, I got uh, disconnected. Oh, host uh, disabled. Who is the host, guys? Which of which one of you guys are the? Which one of you guys is the host? Please make me the host, guys. Priya is uh, the host. Please, uh, Priya, make me the host. Otherwise, I cannot uh, share this. Please make me. The Yes, yeah. Hello, Meet, yeah, sir. Yeah. Meet the host, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. So please, you guys quickly note it down. And uh, stop. Yeah. 